Got the bear, he's got the bear. Come here, Joe. He's Everybody right just be quiet. Everybody be quiet. Right, right in front of the dog's not 30 yards. Right there. Right there. It's coming up. I see it. Yeah. See it. Rest on me. That's a good bear, Joe. He's gonna good. go left. He's, He's gonna, gonna go left, left of that tree. Get on the other side of that tree. Yes. See him? Kill him, Joe. Try to kill it. Hi. Hi, Hi. Joe. No, they got it stopped in the tree. We're gonna have to move up in there. Come on, Joe. This is where dogs get killed right here. Being a twin is the greatest, literally the greatest thing ever. Um, people don't realize how close twins are. I mean, there's brothers and there's sisters and it seems like there's twins. And uh, we make a pretty, pretty solid team. Jason, I'm gonna ride, drive your four-wheeler. You can drive mine and cut. In almost every aspect, we are identical. We think the same. We're totally into the exact same things, hobby-wise, sport-wise, and it kind of freaks some people out. Hunting with hounds, to me, is the ultimate hunt. I, we hunt a, many different species, and from desert sheep to turkeys, and, but there's nothing quite like hound hunting for me. Everybody automatically thinks that you turn a hound loose, boom, it's a done deal. No fair chase, and that is as far from the truth. I mean, there, there's times we'll catch eight or nine bears in a row, and then there's times we'll go five, six in a row and never even see the bear. Can't have that at all. The veterans know it's almost go time. Them dogs love people. It's almost like some of them hunt for you. You know, they really try to please you. They perform so well and they work so hard for you. We don't make these dogs do this. They are natural trailers and, I mean, they naturally do this. You can't make a dog, you can't lead a horse to water and make it drink. You just can't. And it's the same thing with a dog. You can't make a dog hunt. I mean, they hunt because they, they want to hunt. I kind of want to throw that in because yeah, no, it's absolutely. the truth, you know? Yeah. It's the truth. Every year, the Whitaker brothers guide clients through the roughest areas of the Western United States and Old Mexico. This week, it's bear season in the Rim Rock and canyons of New Mexico. This particular area in New Mexico is not really hunted by houndsmen. It's kind of off the radar as far as bear hunting in general because it, you wouldn't think it was bear country. It's surrounded by miles and miles of antelope country and, and then all of a sudden it just poof, dives off into canyon country that's loaded in bears. The mountains, you mostly tree everything. But this country, we rarely tree them. We always end up getting them in the rim rock or baying them up or whatever the situation is. And it's, it's really tough, exciting country. And this country is made even more difficult by Josh's injury. Earlier this year, an incident with a mule while lion hunting resulted in a broken neck but he's determined not to let it slow them down. Although the next morning starts a little later than usual for the Whitaker brothers, they're looking forward to guiding their rowdy friend, Joe Gaines. They should be here within the next hour, so we'll just uh, roll out then. It's gonna be a good day. Look at you. What are you up to? Nothing. Damn good to see you. Yeah, Joe. I've been good. It's yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Good, good to see you. All right, you know what? I think I can take you now. Yeah. <laughs> How you been? It's almost go time, huh, Toots? Come on, Willie. 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 Finding a black bear on a 40,000 acre ranch may seem impossible, but it doesn't take long for these dogs to score a hit. <laughs> Got a hit. Um, we're gonna put a couple dogs down and um, see if they can't get it started on the ground. That's okay. She 
Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Joe. 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 Come on. They're really. They're tree. They're caught up. From a young age, my father used to take me out into the woods hunting, and it was mainly after small game, birds, and uh, I had an opportunity to hang out with a lot of guides while I was out these different sporting lodges. And I used to ride with them. We'd go around, whether it be chasing moose or uh, maybe going and, and baiting a bear site. And it was always intriguing to me. I always thought they were the coolest people on the earth. Yeah. Told you it was gonna happen, right? Dude. Always happens. Nice. Uh, I guess I really didn't understand how much work it was. Ah! Throughout the years, I've had an opportunity to learn all that. You got him? I got him. Lift me up. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely say that the hardest part of outfitting is, is not having control of the animals. What you do have control over is number one, you're believing. But number two, you can also uh, be able to continuously learn and be humble, learn from other people, uh, learn from the animals, learn to diversify and, and uh, continuously uh, be the ultimate predator. It's a good sized animal. That's what we're looking for. Bear in mind, it's a lot of work, physically, mentally, but it's worth it because our goal is to, to help our clients achieve their goals and to have the highest level of, uh, uh, of professionalism to go with it. There's got to be a big old boy in here somewhere. We're putting a lot of time in scouting, whether it be flying the airplane, myself or my father, flying our guides around, taking them out, finding locations. Maybe we found pits and, and rakings and, and rubs. We scout the week before the moose hunt. We don't scout during the moose hunt. And we're putting our guides in those places as well as them finding places and we're all working as a team, which is key. It, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's definitely, I'm very passionate about it. And in my opinion, it is one of my favorite animals to pursue, um, not personally, but to guide somebody. Uh, I love to guide. Based on the edge of the 3.5 million acre forest known as the North Main Woods, this time of year, Nathan Terrio is focused on the main moose hunt. We're ready. Yeah. Just uh, talk to Cliff. He's all ready to go. Yeah. We're, uh, we're all fueled up. Got Rick answering me in the kitchen, so he's good to go. He's got two coffees in him. He'll answer to about anything right now. Be just like these bulls out in the woods. Uh, we got five minutes left. Yeah. Cool. Well, you're you're gonna run me across the lake, to Cliff. I'm gonna get in the the uh, 185 with him. I'm gonna fly out there, do a little scouting, and then I'm gonna meet you at Cunliffe Lake. See you up there, buddy. We'll see you there. Hey, find me a big one on your way in. <laughs> you fly, hey, when you're flying around, let me know if there's even moose in zone two. I left a couple for you. <laughs> Early this morning, he's leaving the day-to-day -day operations of OMM's Eagle Lake Camp to a trusted guide and boarding a float plane en route to the deeply secluded outpost, McNally's Ross Stream Camp. Something about this time of year. What's up, my man? Maine is home to thousands of lakes and river systems. Often, the only way to get to the most remote locations is by float plane. What takes nearly three hours by truck takes less than an hour by air, giving Nathan plenty of time to track down a massive bull for his incoming clients. Oh, he's right there. You can see his rack. Oh, he's straight, straight down. See him? Dude. Right there. Dude. Oh, he's just 
Mexico, Josh and Jason Whittaker have cut the hounds loose okay. after their rig dogs yeah, got a don't, hit don't. on a nearby bear. But hundreds of yards away, the guides can tell something unusual is going on. They're really, they're treed. We don't tree very many, ba very many bears down here. There's not a whole lot of big trees and 90% of our catches are bay ups and caves and rock piles and stuff. So. Adrian. Let's cut them other dogs loose. I didn't bring my handicap sticker. I got mine. Just be careful. Just be careful on this rocks, Joe. I'm pumped. <laughs> Watching my steps. I hope they didn't one start slicking, Jason. Because they're getting screwed up. They act like they're looking at something. Back east, OMM guides Rick Abbott and Ken Mayo have met up with Nathan at the outpost, McNally's Ross Stream Camp. They have the next two days to scout and find the best areas to give their hunters the highest probability of successfully taking home a trophy Maine moose. Dude, I'm gonna get one fired up out here tonight. Dude, doesn't that thing sound good? I like it. I like how you can turn it too. You try beating it on the tree yet? <laughs> <laughs> While Rick leaves to scout with McNally's owner, John Richardson, longtime friends Nathan and Ken have taken to the back roads in search of concentrated moose sign. It's pretty cool, I like it. I like it too. I like you can play with the sound. Definitely gonna call something in. Oh yeah, no question there. And it will die, yep. if it's big. If it's big enough. If it's big. Yes, it's supposed to be pretty good weather next week. Cool down a little bit. Is it? Yeah, it's supposed to be in the low 40s. The worst there. part of this time of year is variable winds. Yep. Big temperature change. Actually, they I was looking at it. They said north-northwest for the first two days, then it's going to switch to east. Southeast. North-northwest for the first two? Yep. We'll get some yep. killing done. Yep. Two days of killing. Somebody will lay one down. By searching maps and aerial photos for winter logging roads, these two guides can often find a big bull's bedroom in short time. And neither one of these thrill seekers will pass up the chance to try out a new call, even if it's on a younger animal. They may look crazy, but these guides know exactly what they're doing. Each chance they get to interact with an animal is a chance for them to learn. <laughs> but even as he inches closer and closer, Ken knows a young moose can become an aggressive thousand pound animal in a split second. See you later. <laughs> that was awesome, yeah. dude. <laughs> All right. All right, let's do that First again. one. Yeah. Let's go oh. play with the bigger one. Yeah. <laughs> Back in New Mexico, the Whitaker brothers' fears have materialized. Oh, man. Slick, slick, slick. The dogs have hit a tree with no bear, a slick tree. It's rare, and it's a wound to the pride of any houndsman of all times to slick tree. 
our dogs rarely ever do that and it's it's not good especially commercially guiding hunters you just you can't have that down here we got a track we'll get to where that's better rammed out right here and try to get it lined out again and see what we can do josh and jason spend all year training their dogs for this moment and a false hit like this gives the bear they're chasing more time to move ahead of their clients. I mean, these dogs can take hours, hours old tracks and move them and get them freshened up and, and end up with something. And this dew is covering tracks that's not very old. And then the, the, the scent's just gone. And I mean, it's... We're catching up. We'll keep rolling. Denny's looking at it, and I can tell by her bark. Yeah. She's doing her wolf bark. So that I think they've got it stopped now. We just, we gotta get up there. We had to stop the machines, because I don't think we'd have pulled the dogs, but we'd have probably buggered that bear hard with them machines. So we just need to sneak in there. They got it stopped right here. Hopefully we'll get a visual. Here we go. Got the bear, got the bear. Come here, Joe. Right there, kill him. That's a good bear, Joe. Good. Gonna go left. He's, He's gonna going go left, left of that tree. Get on the other side of that tree. Yes, see him? Kill him, Joe. Try to kill it. Hi, hi, hi. Joe. No, they got it stopped in the tree. We're gonna have to move up in there. Come on, Joe. This is where dogs get killed right here. Jason, he's up on the rim. We gotta keep going, Joe. Take your time, Joe. Come over here, Joe. Joe, right here, right there. See him, get up here, get up here. Gosh, gosh, yeah. come on, Joe, we gotta come around. Moving swiftly at this elevation can take its toll. Come on, Joe, push right here. And client Joe Gaines is beginning to feel the pressure in his struggle to keep up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He's gonna, he's gonna come gonna out right or right, right there. Kill him. Got him, Joe. Beautiful yeah. bear, Joe. <laughs> yes. Good. He's, I think he's down. Yeah, he's yeah, down he right there. Down. Yeah, too big. We got him. <laughs> he went down behind that rock. To evade danger. Bears will seek deep cover even after a mortal wound. And a wounded bear tucked into a small cave is a very dangerous situation. If that bear's still alive, it's gonna be tight. So, and Harry, Jason, Joe, and you, like this, Jason and Joe in the front, I'm not gonna be right up in there, Adrian, bad, none Joe. of us, we're gonna stay just a little bit back because I, if that comes flying out we got to go to shoot in or yet. something when you get up it's here, gonna we... get dangerous for everybody i think we can yeah come here, he's over here come on next week this is a good spot got a pretty good area locked down nathan and his guides welcome the hunters for the first season of the main moose hunt we're on our way to the first day of moose hunting and just as he predicted the first day provides his clients with a number of opportunities that's a huge bowl get your bowl ready after making a successful shot on a new mexico black bear the real work for the Whitaker brothers begins. We're in a little bit of a pickle here. If he comes out, he's gonna get a 45 in the face. Tight spaces. I mean, this is not good. I mean, we can't even get to where we can touch him. Yeah, I can't get over the top of it. And improvised resources may make the recovery of their client's animal a dangerous impossibility.